All right, in this video, we're going to talk about Gaussian filtering and OpenCV using Python. So we'll start off by saying what it is, why do we need it, how does it work, and jump straight into a coding example. So by the end of this video, we'll see how we could use this kernel here to convert this clear image to this blurry image. So what is Gaussian filtering? It's a filtering method that uses a Gaussian kernel for convolution. So this thing right here is called the Gaussian kernel. So why do we need Gaussian filtering? It's good for um, smoothing noise or just noise reduction and also for general pre-processing techniques. So how does the Gaussian filtering work? So Gaussian filtering, uh, the way it works is um, this is the equation for a Gaussian. So this is for 1D, this is for 2D. And the way it works is it generates this kernel here. So this is a 3D plot and you can see that it follows like a Gaussian distribution curve. So what this means is that, you know, in the center of the kernel is going to take the most weight. And then as it goes outside, it'll take less and less weight. So there's this sigma term here, and this controls how skinny or fat it is. The fatter the sigma is, or the bigger the sigma is, the fatter the kernel, and the smaller it is, the skinnier. So, you know, you can have ranges of like fat to skinny kernels here. And then this image here, on the bottom is a 2D view. So you could think of this as like a top view of this 3D image. And this is what we will be convolving as our kernel, okay? So let's jump straight into a coding example. Okay, so as usual, we're gonna import some of the modules that we need. So import CV2 as CV, import OS, import NumPy as MP, and import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. And we're going to go ahead and make our function called Gaussian filtering. And we have our if name equals main. And inside of here, we have our Gaussian filtering function. Okay, so here we have our Gaussian filtering. So we want to go ahead and read in our image. So root equals os dot get. Uh, CWD, so that's our root path, and we want to have our image path, it's going to be os.path.join, pass in root, and then we have demo images, and we have tessa.jpg, okay, so we have our image path, and image equals cv.amread, and we'll pass in our uh, image path here, so now we want to um, start filtering, uh, we want to have Let's take a look at how these kernels actually work. So let's have a kernel size of 51 for now. We'll create a figure, plt.figure. And then here we're gonna do plt.subplot. We wanna plot the two, two Gaussian um, kernels side by side so we can see the comparison between um, the, 1D, the 2D and 3D. So kernel equals uh, the Gaussian. There's gonna be a function called um, Gaussian kernel. So we're going to go ahead and make the Gaussian kernel function. So uh, we're going to call this Gaussian kernel. And this will take, take in the size, size and sigma value. Okay, so here we're going to um, set kernel equals to cv dot get uh, Gaussian kernel. So the get Gaussian kernel function actually just passes the filter coefficients for 1D. So we need to do some uh, magic to make the kernel happen. So uh, we'll pass in kernel again and do mp outer, and then we'll do kernel and kernel. So this will give us our 2D kernel. So we'll return kernel. Okay, so that is okay. So we have our Gaussian kernel function here returning our kernel. So now we can call our Gaussian uh, kernel function. So we have our Gaussian kernel function, and we're gonna go ahead and um, pass in our kernel. So we have our size n here, and then we'll check out a sigma of eight. Um, just need to spell this Gaussian with a i a n here. We have our Gaussian kernel, right? To pass in g. Actually, it should be g a. Let me fix this. Gaussian here, Gaussian kernel. So now we have our kernel, and then we could do plt dot um show, and then pass in the kernel. So if we do a plt dot show, 
we should be able to see our 2D version of our um, Gaussian plot here. Okay, so that's our Gaussian kernel. And then if we want to see a 3D version, let's go ahead and add a 3D version in here. We'll have a, um, AX for our um, plot. We'll have a fig equals add uh, subplot. We'll do a one, two, two. And then we want to do a projection equals 3D, okay? So now we could do x equals mp dot um, arrange and go from zero to n, and the step is one. And likewise, we'll do it for the y. Okay, and then now we could do a mesh grid. So we have x y equals mp dot mesh grid, and then pass in x y. And now we could find z equals kernel dot uh, flatten. And we do ax dot plot surface and pass in x y our kernel. Actually, we're not going to be using um, the z value here. So uh, we have x y kernel, and then our c map is going to be called veritas. And if we go ahead and run this we should see our mesh grid plot, okay? So this is how our kernel looks like. And let's just kind of tweak the sigma value. If we made this sigma a two and run this, um, we should see the kernel got a lot skinnier, right? So we could play around with this uh, sigma value and that essentially tells us how we're doing the filtering. So it depends how, how much uh, smooth transition you want or how much weight you want in different parts of the image. So you could play around with that value. So let's take a look at four somewhere in between. So yeah, you could play around with that is. And sometimes there's, um, it'll automatically calculate that for you. You could, if you don't specify it, you could calculate it for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a function to do our filtering. So here we will have um, a window name because we're gonna play around with a track bar. We'll call this Gauss filter. And then we have a named window we'll call win name. And then inside we're gonna create a cv.create uh, track bar. And we'll pass in, uh, the track bar is gonna be controlling the sigma so we can see how the sigma value is affecting it. And we'll start it off at one and change it to two or change, go up to 20, I mean, and then we're gonna pass in a callback function. So our callback here, we're gonna just do nothing for now. So we're gonna have a def callback and then pass in input. And we're just gonna say pass because we're not doing anything for now. Um, and our image is a little big, so I wanna resize this. So we have our height width, uh, it's gonna equal to our image.shape here. And we're gonna scale it by one fourth and then we'll have our new width equals int width uh, times scale. And we'll do the same thing for the height. So we have height here. And then we have our new image. It's going to be cv, cv dot resize. And we're going to pass in our image and then our width and height. Okay, so that's going to resize it for us. And then now we'll go ahead and put it inside our loop here so we can see it change. So we'll say while true, have an infinite loop and then set up our um, breaking condition. So CV weights key. And if we hit the key Q, we'll do ORD ORD Q. And then it's gonna break if we hit the Q key. Okay, so now we could extract our sigma value as we uh, slide the track bar using the get uh, track bar position, tell it the name of our track bar, and then pass in the window name. And now we could filter our image here using the CV dot um, Gaussian blur. And we could pass in our image, and then the kernel size, and our sigma value. Okay, so that's our filter image, and then we could do CV dot um, show, and then pass in the window name, and then the image filter. Okay, so now we could go ahead and just have our destroy all windows after we quit. So we should have a little app here that can help us 
see our, I'm going to close this, so we can see our sigma value as we drag it. So you can see this was sigma, um, you can see sigma 1, 2, and if I slowly drag, it gets more and more blurry. Okay, so this might be a good way to tune your sigma values to see how much blur you blurry you want, how much blurriness you want in your image. So um, if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.